New data just changed our entire idea of what planets can support life. Anthony here for DNews with your weekly space update. Life on other planets. Up until a few years ago, we had only observed a few exoplanets that could potentially support life. But then, thanks to new data and an expanding idea of what habitable means, that number is getting bigger, like orders of magnitude bigger. There's this thing called the circumstellar habitable zone, but it's more often called the habitable zone or the Goldilocks zone because it means the region around a star that's just right for a planet to support life as we know it. If a planet with the right atmospheric pressure is orbiting a star in its Goldilocks zone, we consider it possible that it has liquid water and therefore living things. We sit right in the center of our sun's Goldilocks zone, but it stretches out as far as Mars, which is why we're so keen on finding life there. Now in 2011, data from the Kepler spacecraft, poor injured little guy, led us to believe that there were two billion planets in our galaxy that could support life. The best candidate we've found so far is the cozy Gliese 667cc. It's nestled in orbit around one star in a triple star system 22.7 light years away in the constellation Scorpius. Lovely views, wonderful place to raise a family. The Kepler data says that there should be one habitable planet for each red dwarf star out there, and that's the most common kind of star there is. But then last summer, some researchers from the University of Chicago said, wait, there are more variables to take into account. For instance, a lot of planets outside of the Goldilocks zone of their stars have clouds of some kind, and clouds can reflect sunlight to cool things and absorb heat from the planet's surface. So some planets that seem too close to their stars could actually still support life. So all of a sudden, we went from 2 billion possible planets to 60 billion. 60 billion planets in our galaxy with possible life. And then just this week, a new paper written by the University of Aberdeen says that even cold, rocky clouds cloudless planets could support life too, because it could be under the planet's surface. As you go deeper into a planet, it gets warmer. And if the temperature is warm enough to support water under the surface, then it's possible that water exists there. We found life on Earth uh, about five kilometers deep under the surface, and it could exist as deep as 10 kilometers. If you moved our planet three times further away from the sun than it is now, we would be incredibly dead, but that underground life would still be at the minimum temperature required for water. So that means that the Goldilocks zone could be 14 times wider than we previously thought. Now for reference in our solar system, that would mean that life could exist on an Earth-like planet as far away as Jupiter or Saturn, but there's more. If the life on the planet is under the surface, it wouldn't need an atmosphere like ours to survive. It could exist in a corrosive atmosphere or no atmosphere at all because being underground would shield it from a lot of nasty stuff. It might even mean that subsurface life is more common in the universe. Maybe surface life like ours is the exception and not the rule. And don't forget, poor hobbled little Kepler is still up there, potentially being reconfigured for a new mission, which means more data, which means based on past events, we might find exponentially more planets that support life. Okay, I asked this last time we talked about exoplanets, but now with this new data, what percentage of planets out there do you think have life on them and how long until we actually find it? Let me know and subscribe for more space news every Friday.